obviously if light doesn't have if this i mean because gravitational waves also travel at the speed of light so they, they travel the same speed the speed of light does so obviously if it's beyond what we call the particle horizon it's beyond the observable universe obviously nothing can can mm -hmm. travel faster than the speed of light so we're not going to see it or hear it but anything within the observable universe there could be a black hole merging right at the very boundary and the we could in principle build detectors with the next generation of observatories that would be able to catch every single damn one of the things. But like, when you say two black holes are like gonna collide together, what, is, what does that even mean? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> so there are, it, all stars um, evolve as they get older, they change. And uh, the sun will not evolve into a black hole. It's not big enough to fall into a black hole, but the biggest stars will. And a lot of stars are in binary star systems. Wait, the sun's not big enough to fall into a black hole? To, to become a black hole. It won't oh, fall into itself. It. I was going to say, I hole. saw Matthew McConaughey fall yeah. the last yeah. time. The right. yeah. So, yeah, so you could push the sun into a black hole. Yeah. But if you leave the sun alone, it will not become a black hole. So I'm bigger than the yeah. sun. <laughs> Good impression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I worked on that one. Yeah. We, so we don't think that's going to happen to the sun, but some of the biggest stars will do that. And lots of the big stars actually live in pairs. Um, they're kind of, you know, our sun's pretty lonely, but a lot of stars are binary or even trinary. Um, so they mess around. They're, they're not monogamous. They, that's you know, right. Yeah. They're, they're polyamorous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever. Polyamorous yeah. stars. They have, they have their swinger parties out there. That's right. And as they, um, as they evolve and get older, uh, they can they, these stars eventually slowly kind of spiral in towards each other, and there's various ways that can happen. There's lots of people studying exactly different mechanisms that can happen, but generally, there's you know we expect this to happen. So as they get closer and closer and closer, these binaries will merge eventually, and um, when that happens, we get these like ripples through space time. So mm. it's it's not really light. There is there is some light effect as well, but primarily the main effect you see or hear is a ripple in space time itself. And so that's what these um, gravitational wave detectors like LIGO have been uh, so successful at. So we've detected something like a few hundred merging black holes <sighs> by hearing them them merge together. And what's really wild, we we have a new faculty member. We can hear it. I mean, it is basically a sound wave propagating through space time. You just hear like <laughs> black hole just got sucked up. Yeah, if you if we yeah, I mean it is actually t technically possible because it 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 shifts space, it bends space, and that's what a sound wave kind of does. It compresses air, so it causes a compression wave. So it is possible um, that you could, if you were near one of these events, you could actually hear it with your own ears, which is really that's crazy. Nuts. Even in the vacuum of space, so they say in space you can't hear anything, but if you're near a merging black hole certain configurations, you would actually be able to hear those frequencies. Whoa. I think my colleague, Jan Eleven, told me that, and I was like, that is that is wild. I love oh that. Oh my God. So that's, yeah, it is literally like hearing the universe, these effects. So it's a completely different way. I mean, for 400 years of astronomy, we've just been using light, x-rays, photons, it's all light. Whereas um, this is like radically different. This is This is like ripples that you're feeling in space itself. So that's that's been pretty mind boggling, and uh, we're what's really crazy is that if we keep doing this, if we build even bigger versions of these detectors, um, these telescopes, these I mean, they're kind of like a telescope. These gravitational wave detectors, they they can be in principle so sensitive that we could detect every black hole merging in the entire universe. There wouldn't be a single black hole merger. That we would not be able to detect. in the whole universe the entire, when we don't even know the size. Of in it? the vis, what, what I mean is the the visible un, the universe okay. that uh, light has time to Got reach it. us. Obviously, if light doesn't have if this, I mean, because gravitational waves also travel at the speed of light, so they they travel the same speed the speed of light does. So obviously, if it's beyond what we call the particle horizon, it's beyond the observable universe. Obviously, nothing can can mm -hmm. travel faster than the speed of light, so we're not going to see it or hear it. But anything within the observable universe. There could be a black hole merging right at the very boundary, and the, we could, in principle, build detectors with the next generation of observatories that would be able to catch every single damn one of the things. Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you. What's the relation of time there, though? And here's what I mean by that. You know, a hundred years passes here on Earth, but if something exists fucking 12 million light years away or something, is the same, this is getting to kind of the interstellar plot too, yeah. is the same amount of time one second there. Like if, if, a, if, if we're detecting something with black holes, like you were just talking about, that's happening way over here, 
and it takes 200 years to develop here on Earth? Is yeah. it really just taking a totally different form of time, longer or shorter, to actually develop out there? And how do we know that? Yeah, I mean, it depends where you put your clock. So I, we've got one clock here on the Earth. But where's this other clock you're putting exactly? Is it because you say like put it in the system, but if you put it, the closer and closer you put it to the horizon of the black hole, the slower that clock will tick. And eventually as it's on the event horizon itself, it will stop ticking. So if you if you watch someone fall into the black hole, like say I was falling backwards into mm -hmm. the black hole and you were watching from the spaceship above, going, eh, have a good time <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching Matthew McConaughey fall down. He would actually seem to slow more and more and more as he got closer and closer. And it, from his perspective, that's not happening. In his perspective, he just falls straight through. But from our perspective, watching him fall, he would seem to slow down more and more and more. And he'd also get redder and redder and redder because the wavelengths of light now have to, it's kind of like um, a gravitational, well, it is literally a gravitational well. It's like a hill. And so the light now has to climb out of that hill. And as it climbs out the hill, it's like it's losing potential energy. And so it it shifts. It's called a gravitational redshift. It shifts from, let's say it was blue light coming off his helmet. It shifts towards the red by that same effect we talk about with the expanding universe. Yeah. So he would look redder and redder and redder and fainter and fainter and fainter. And eventually he would almost go invisible, be far redder than our eyes can see and completely freeze on the surface. So the, we were, you would never actually witness him past the event horizon until the, literally the end of the universe itself, he'd be stuck there from our perspective. From our perspective, but it's, yeah. it's not what happened. But from his, I mean, we don't really know what happens inside the event horizon from his perspective. That's where physics kind of breaks a little bit. That's you go. crazy though, that like you, you're telling me I could physically like take a clock that's moving and when I, that clock itself, when I'm getting close to this hole, it slows down to like a stop. Yeah. It sounds like a DMT trip. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't even sound real. <laughs> like the so, the clock DMT knows, trip. like, oh, he's near a black hole. Stop ticking. Yeah. There are so many questions about. Yeah, I mean, we know we know pretty well what we'd expect to happen from our perspective, and the the mystery I always think about is what does yeah Matthew McConaughey experience? Like, what what does he see from his yeah. perspective? And you know, if I was given the choice, like you, you know, let's say you're like you've lived your life, you're 75, 80 years old, and you're like, okay, we've only got a year or two left to go. Um, I'd be quite tempted to throw myself into a black hole, given the option, just to like see, because yeah. it, it's like a one-way trip. You can never tell anyone what you see. Once you go through that event horizon, there's no way you can ever send information back out. So you're, what, what you know is for you and for you alone, and you would be the only human being, the, the only individual who would ever actually know what happens inside a black hole. Now, what if, what if our bodies here are just containers of the soul which you know some religions posit yeah and when you die physically your spirit actually it turns out we figured out after death passes through something like a black hole to some other side or some other dimension or something like that perhaps you might and i'm totally like riffing right here but perhaps maybe you would experience something similar to what the actual like oh i'm 75 i got a year or two left let me just fucking send it and fall into a black <laughs> hole I've heard wilder ideas for what happens in the afterlife. I put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, they're kind of the uh, like. Uh, there's something about black holes that are like a cheat code to reality itself. Mm. This, they are they they are a break in the rules of the universe itself, where you know the, there's these holes that punch through space and time, and all of our questions about you know one of the grand goals of physics is to try to unify quantum physics which is a theory of the very small, with um, general relativity, the theory of the very large. And at black holes, those two worlds meet. And it's pretty much the only object we know of where both of those physical effects manifest in meaningful ways. Mm. So you know, there's this paradox with black holes called the information paradox, which is like, what happens to stuff that falls in? Quantum theory says that you can't delete information. So uh, it's, I'm sort of paraphrasing it a little bit, but essentially it's like every process is reversible. You could like take an egg and you could you could smash it into a million pieces and crack it on the table. But in principle, we could, if we wanted to like put everything back together and make the egg again, you could undo it. Um, every process should be time reversible in quantum physics. But in a, with a black hole, it's not time reversible. When something falls through that event horizon, like we said, that's it. It, it, it can't come back yeah. out. So 
um, there's a another way of saying that is that you've lost information. The universe has like erased, it's deleted information that the universe once had, unless it was a textbook with, um, you know, your a biography in it or something. All those words, all that information is gone forever. And quantum physics just can't handle that. And so a lot of physicists are thinking really hard. This is why it's a paradox. It doesn't make any sense. There must be a way for that information to somehow get back out. And one of the ideas that seems connected is that Stephen Hawking had this brilliant insight of something called Hawking radiation. We now mm. call it, he didn't call it that. We call it Hawking radiation. You're a bit of a jerk if you call something after yourself. Right. Yeah, I need to wait till you Kipping die. radiation. Yeah. But yeah, he called it, uh, he got called this afterwards. But he basically showed through, you know, th some quantum arguments that you, you should expect black holes to evaporate over time. To evaporate. So they, yeah, they don't last forever either. So um, the the kind of the, the cartoon way to understand this is to imagine that a pair of particles pops up into existence, which happens all the time, even in this room right now, in empty space, there's constant virtual pairs of particles popping up and antimatter and matter pop up and immediately annihilate each other so mm -hmm. fast that we don't even really have time to see it. And quantum physics says that happens all the time It's in, and it's very well understood and observable. Um, so this should happen on, on the event horizon of a black hole. So you've got this boundary, everything on this side falls in, everything on the other side can escape in principle. And a, a pair of particles could form right in that threshold. One of the guys falls in and the other guy has the opportunity to potentially escape. And if it escapes, it is basically removing energy from the black hole because that was that energy that pair of particles was like a was like a loan. Mm. It's like borrowing money from the bank, and so somehow now that that dollar that you loaned has escaped. Yeah, and so the black hole has to lose that dollar, has to decrease in its mass to accommodate for that. So this Hawking radiation effect causes black holes to very 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 slowly um, lose mass and evaporate, which is interesting then from the perspective of what happens if you fell in if time really does get massively distorted, you could in principle observe this speed up effect of seeing your own black hole that you're inside evaporate whilst you're in it and disappear. Is there also a, maybe I'm totally misinterpreting this with the example you just gave, but is there also like a Schrodinger's cat type idea there where there's two possibilities of what happens to the same person, meaning they fall in or they escape? Well. Not exactly in this analogy, but you could imagine experiments like that. You, okay. you could certainly imagine um, having some, you'd have to have some kind of random 50-50 quantum mm. coin that's like, okay, 50% of the time, um, this rocket's going to blast you into the black hole. and <laughs> 50% of the time, you're going to stay inside this uh, inside this ship. Um, and then, yeah, then you could have these quantum superpositions set up where you're both inside the black hole and uh, I've never that's a really wild idea actually I've never heard of the Schrodinger cat thought of with black holes but yeah. I could imagine uh, having some fun thinking about the consequences of that thank you guys for checking out this clip if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe and hit the like button on this video it is a huge huge help and if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode that link is in the description below or right here and finally you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below